Hey, animals, Mike and Blake here. We, uh, we were feeling like it was a great day to come up with some more content to help loan officers in the group. So for those of you that may not know, Blake is an amazing part of our team here, one of the trainers at MMA. Uh, he talks to so many loan officers on a daily and weekly basis, going over strategies, scripts, ideas, just like I do over here. So we wanted to come together to just share some insight that we're seeing. So, hey, Blake, how you doing today, buddy? Magic Mike, it is Freedom Friday, and if our listeners do not know, we're helping coach a lot of loan officers, BDRs, LOAs, VAs, you name it, anybody in the mortgage industry helping your team to find that freedom, maybe even have a three or four day work week, make some money, have a great life, right, brother? That's what we're all about. 100%. I love it, man. So you talk to, man, I don't know anybody that talks to more loan officers than you, man. I mean, you're over here just, I hear you on the other side of the wall, conversation, conversation, Zoom meeting, consultations. When chatting with so many different loan officers in different areas of their business, you know, different models, do you see a pattern of what's holding them back? Like, what's the biggest obstacles that you're seeing when it comes to the mortgage industry? Absolutely. And you know what, money, uh, magic money, Mike, you know, what's funny is uh, it's the same thing over the last 30 years and the next 30 years. It's, it's almost a people issue, right? It's call reluctance for sure is definitely the number one issue with loan officers, salespeople in general, right, brother? Uh, we got to pick up the phone and it's the cheapest way to actually make money right now, right? So we do find that that's the number one thing. The second thing that we have definitely found, especially over coaching a lot of loan officers, you get a lot of feedback and whatnot, right? Um, is absolutely being busy and not effective. Being a loan officer, brother, you sign up for, you know, to be a loan officer with your company that you, of your choice. And man, you got this list of things you got to do, right? Now, all these activities, they're not even activities, really. They're just tasks, if you will. And a lot of them are not making you money, but right. they're keeping you busy and not effective, right? Totally. hundred. I like you busy, but not effective, right? Busy, but not productive. It's easy to feel like that in this industry, right? No doubt about that. So one hand is called reluctance, right? I mean, just reaching out to people that we know, people that we don't know. Where would you start or what's your best? I know call reluctance can be you know, stemming from a few different things, but what's your general advice when it comes to just struggling to make the calls? We need to reach out to people we already know, like, and trust. And uh, I think we live in a world nowadays where we're so distracted by all those like shiny objects that Carl talks about a lot is, man, you got Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all these things. You think that there's so much more that we need to do at one time and it makes us a tyrant, right? So it has to be that one thing at a time, same way mentality with the call reluctance um, on who we approach and how we approach them. The first and easiest way, Mike, and I think you'd agree, brother, if you were starting new somewhere, didn't really know anybody, why reach out to cold folks and get those at bats, like going against the Tom Brady's in the street on your calls and just getting beat up. Why not give ourselves the right opportunity to build that confidence so when we can go execute those uh, conversations with the whales and the tunas, the tilapies that we coach and talk about, right? So why not start out talking to people you already like and trust and that you can probably almost guarantee that they're going to give you a lead or give you something of value to make you feel good. So past database, if your manager or your boss or the, the lender, direct lender, wherever you're at, if you have any type of past database, let's reach out to those folks. They already like you. They already trusted your business to help them fund their home. Um, I think that's amazing. So reach out to them. Secondly, brother, as you would agree, you know, your friends on Facebook, people in your contact list on your phone, people you went to school with, people you graduated college with, mm -hmm. fraternity brothers, sorority sisters, people you do a monthly or every week golf outing, or you do a golf club down the street, at the local uh, golf place, right? Uh, any of those folks that you'd run into on the weekend at the mall and be like, hey, what's going on, Mike? I haven't seen you in forever, dude. Let's go grab a drink together, right? All we got to do is just ask for the business. Those folks, that's exactly who I would start out if I were to redo it all over again or become a loan officer today. I love that. Yeah. So, so too often do we think we need more leads when really we just need to follow up and touch base with the people that we know already better, right? That's a great reminder of that. The agents we've already known and we worked with friends, family, clients, especially, my gosh, there's really no shortage of people for us to reach out to in most cases. We're just not thinking about them, right? Too busy focused on the you next. Know, Mike, let me ask you this real quick, brother. How would that go about? So like, if you were going to reach out to, um, Let's say I'm like your, your fraternity brother. We used to kick it all the time. We used to do a bunch of fun stuff together years ago. And you know that you can hit me up any day of the week and, and we can have a conversation and that I probably would help you out. So what would that kind of look like? If you were to call me, I was in your phone book. You forgot about me. How would you approach that person? Yeah, it's a great question, man. So I would reach out just like you being an old friend, no different, very similar to like an old client or an old, old agent. It's very much a similar scripting, same type of vibe, energy to the call. Okay. Where I'd reach out and say, hey, Blake, it's Mike. Dude, it's been forever. How you been, dude? We'd catch up, right? I'd ask you about work, 
right? How's work going? How's your business going? You'd probably yeah, reciprocate man, and ask great. me the same, it's right? Great. Right. Yeah, good, man. How's the family, man? What you up to these days? Anything new? We're going to kind of mini frog them, right, Mike? Yeah, mini frog, right? Family, recreation, occupation, goals, right? So mini frog catching up, right? Hey, it's been too long. It's been forever. How's work? How's the job? How's family? Probably ask me the same question. Hey, Mike, how's work going for you? Dude, things are great, man. Loving what I do. We're helping so many families. Hey, Blake, in fact, you know, it's a tough time, you know, for a lot of people, rates are going up. We'd love to help your family now. Do you know anybody looking to buy, sell, refinance before rates go up even more? I would use that as an opportunity. When talking to a friend, I'd ask how their job is going first. They'll probably ask you how your job is going. And then it's more appropriate to even ask for a referral because it's not like it came out of the blue or left field. Um, man, it, it's very appropriate. It's very congruent with the conversation at hand, right? So. Absolutely. Um, and if not, if it didn't come up, I'd still do that call to action at the end. Hey, you know, before you go, buddy, always let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Let's stay in touch more often. And think of me too. If you know anybody looking to buy, sell, refinance, or any, anything I can help with, please let me know, right? And you want to ask for it, but no different than with a client. Hey, Blake, we helped you with your financing. Congrats. You know, I just want to say thank you again for working with us over here. How's the home? How's the family? Yeah, how's the house? Is everything you wanted, right? Hundred percent. You just want to catch up, show appreciation, gratitude, stay top of mind. Ask how else you can help. Ask for referrals. I would do the same thing with an agent. If it's a higher producing agent, we'd want to meet with them to build a better relationship. Most of them probably don't produce so much, right? Just by the nature of the beast. Absolutely. And we're still going to do that same thing. How you been? How's business? How's it going? Anything I can do to help? Anybody we should take a look at? It's very much that same pattern. It's so very effective, Mike. And the thing is, if we sweat it out. You know, Steve Kyles, everybody knows Steve Kyles. I'm sure you do. And if you don't, loanofficerleadership.com, check it out. Free podcast. The guy's a beast with scripting. He's one of our best coaches we have other than Magic Mike here uh, with the Mortgage Marketing Animals. He talks about it same way every time. This is the type of business where if we follow that, we ask for the business, whether it's your circle of influence, whether it's your past database. I don't care if it's a brand new cold agent that you meet. If we ask enough offers minus knows equals money, Magic Mike talks about it all the time. That's what gets the needle moving in your business. Remember, we're going to reach out to these folks now. Yes, it's the 80% of sales activities we have to do now at the beginning of the business. But rather to do those uh, $400 activities 120 days from now, sounds a lot better, don't it? Absolutely. No doubt about it, man. And obviously, we, we experience a lot of different challenges in our business, right? There's certainly not one or two. But if you had to pick out another one, right, call reluctance being rampant. That's a big problem. If you feel that way, if you're listening to this, very common, not your fault. We got your back. That's why we're here. We teach you what to do, what to say. We'll encourage you through it. You let, you let us know if you need help. What would you say? Just, just one more thing before we go. What else? Any other big challenges, obstacles? For, for, let's say somebody doesn't have call reluctance. What, what, what would another big problem maybe be? I got to say it's structure. That was actually one of the other things I was thinking of. It, 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 it's sure. almost like it's in between the number one and number two. Like you can almost put half. It could be like two and a half, right? If there's two and a half things, uh, I, it's got to be structure, brother, because it's, again, that same way every time mentality. Am I having the same conversations every week? Am I asking for the business every week? We could do that, right? But if we don't have a structured day, scheduled day to know, hey, this is the time I'm going to be really pounding, asking for the business. From 9 to 11, I'm asking for the business. That is what it is. And the rest of the day, I know this is what I'm doing. But always have that in the back of your brain when you see that opportunity, we need to ask for the business no matter what. But brother, when you have that... Have that schedule, have that process the same way every time, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 11, 11 to 2, 2 to 5, knowing that you have that blocked out. We can scale how many times we're asking for the business. We could scale if we are not doing those activities, right? So I got to say it's structure, man. If you do not have that structure um, and you do, do not have that team behind you and, and you don't have that how all set up for you, you know, mm -hmm. we can ask for the business all we want, but if we don't have that process, we're not going to close loans on time. We're not going to be as accountable as we need to be. So you've got to have that daily structure, print your calendar out, whatever it is, so you can hold yourself accountable daily. I bet you that has to be really close to the other two. Yeah. Markets. Yeah, you know, I, I absolutely agree. We find often, even through personality tests, which will indicate that most loan originators really suffer from a poor level of organization, which makes this <laughs> business even more difficult the busier that we become, right? So having that structure, a time management system, a routine, a process, a system, along with that would be just as we overcome call reluctance and as we add that structure, we get busier, right? And as we get busier, 
that may be a challenge for you if, if you're listening to this and you go, you know what? I make all my calls. I'm bringing in so many deals. I can't keep up with it, Mike and Blake. Well, then we need to hire help to help us with that structure. Get an assistant, almost like a, a restaurant that gets busier. They need another chef, a manager, a busboy, a server, or a doctor right. that maybe needs you know some other associates in there, some nurses, somebody working the front desk. The mortgage industry, perhaps we need another assistant. You know, We need a, a loan coordinator. Maybe we need a processor. A VA, LOA, sure. anybody that can help. So we can still be working four days a week and they could take care of some of the activities that we don't need to because we need to be out asking for the business. We need to be out meeting agents. We need to be out letting ourselves know in the community that we're here to help. We're here to get you in your home fast. We're here to put you in a good situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great example. You know, we get caught up doing the wrong things, right? Like for example, what do you think the average commission is that you hear for most people? Two grand, three grand, four, something like that. That's it. Like, yeah. Somewhere yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I normally hear, you know, and just spoke with a guy makes five, $6,000 alone. Right. It's really big. But let's say that we're, we're talking about like a $2,000 commission. All right. Yeah. Uh, just to be conservative and fair and average. So, well, you got to think that if I came up to you and offered you a $20 bill, but in exchange, I wanted a $2,000 check. You think I'm crazy. We would never do that, right? Because it's a bad financial decision. Right, Why would you do that with your time then? If there's something that you're doing that you could pay somebody like we do, 20 bucks an hour to answer the phone, answer your email, take an app, pull credit, run DU, structure packages, clear conditions, get documents, lock a rate, price a loan. That's a 20 to $25 hour activity where you could be getting the next $2,000 sale, right? Just a matter of perspective, no different than the doctor or the restaurant owner, right? It's, it's just a better form of delegation. So I like that, man. I mean, just some things to think about. Where are you struggling? If you're listening to this right now, this was just a quick, quick clip hit from me and Blake today. Think about it. Is it call reluctance? Is it structure and organization? Is it maybe delegation? Do we need to build a better team? And if you need help with any of that, of that at all, please reach out to us. You know, we got your back over here, the MMA family. We'd be honored to assist you even more along your journey. And we're always here to help. But hey, Blake, thanks so much, brother. I know you got some calls to make and, uh, you know, then we're off to the races from there. So we'll talk soon, buddy. Magic Mike, I appreciate you, brother. We're growing fast and we're here to help folks. And man, I'm looking forward to, to what the future has in store here with the animals. So appreciate you, brother, man. Everybody recharge your batteries this weekend. Enjoy your weekends. Go get them, animals. Take care. Thanks, Blake. Bye. <laughs>